Good morning and welcome to our new weeks of morning devotions. We're in Philippians chapter 2, verses 19 to 30. It's Philippians 2, 19 to 30. I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, so that I too may be cheered by news of you. But I have no one like him who will genuinely who will be genuinely concerned for your welfare. For they all seek their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know Timothy's proven worth, how as a son with a father he has served with me in the gospel. I hope therefore to send them just as soon as to see how it will go with me. And I trust in the Lord that shortly I myself will come also. I thought it necessary to send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and fellow worker and fellow soldier, and your messenger and minister to my need. For he has been longing for you all, and has been distressed because you heard that he was ill. Indeed, he was ill, near to death. But God had mercy on him, and not only on him, but on me also, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. I am more eager to send him, therefore that you may rejoice at seeing him again, and that I may be less anxious. So receive him in the Lord with all joy, and honour such men. For he nearly died for the work of Christ, risking his life to complete what was lacking in your service to me. Amen. After the, the great heights of theology and truth that we were dealing with earlier in this chapter, we now come to a, a much more down-to-earth and, and practical part of the chapter and here Paul is speaking about two of his fellow workers first of all Timothy and then Epaphroditus so first of all Timothy is mentioned in verses 19 to 24 and he Paul who's in Rome a prisoner in Rome is speaking here about sending Timothy to these Christians in Ephesus and one of the reasons for doing that is he wants Timothy in return to, to bring him news about how the Christians in Philippi are doing. And he longs to be cheered with good news from them. And we see here that in ministry and in the whole area of encouragement, it needs to be a two-way street. Paul could be very discouraged in his imprisonment. He needs to hear how his brothers and sisters in Christ are doing. And knowing that they're going on well would really encourage him in his walk. And so in the work of ministry and the work of gospel, we all need encouragement. And uh, the minister should encourage his people. And the people need to encourage their ministers as well. Because sometimes it can be difficult. And then he speaks about Timothy, how in verses 20 to 23, that Timothy is someone who has proved himself to be the real deal. He genuinely cares for others. He speaks there of how he's not someone who's just taken up with his own self-interest as, as other people are. Now there's a challenge for you and for me. Are you someone who is sacrificial, who really cares for other people? Who, are you someone who will put yourself out for other people? Or are you just caught up in your own self-interest? To be Christ-like, of course, means being sacrificial. He then speaks about Timothy in verse 23 being a, a worker in the gospel. He speaks of Timothy being like a, a son to him and serving in the gospel. Are you a worker in the gospel? Has the gospel so captured your heart? Is that true for Jesus humbling himself and coming obedient all the way to the cross and then being exalted to the highest place in glory? Has that truth really encouraged in you a real passion to be involved in the gospel? There's no other work, there's no other service you can do in this world which is of greater joy and greater lasting significance than gospel work. Gospel work will last into eternity, the fruits of it. So Paul speaks here about sending Timothy to Philippi to see the Philippians. 
But then he says in verse 24 that he plans to come as well. Here we see the great faith of the man. He's in prison. He's possibly facing death. He says, well, I'm trusting in the Lord that I'll be able to come soon and see you. In chains? Facing death? No problem to my God. What a picture of God he had. We too need that big picture. And then secondly, Paul speaks about sending Epaphroditus in verses 25 to 30. It appears that Epaphroditus had been sent by the Philippian Christians to Paul in Roman in order to help serve and to meet Paul's needs. When you were a, a prisoner, you relied on people coming and bringing you food and, and that which you needed. And Epaphroditus seems to become someone sent by the Philippians to do that for Paul. But Epaphroditus longs to go back to see the Philippians because he is distressed that they have heard that he was sick and he doesn't want them to be unduly concerned about them. He wants to go and, and put their minds at ease. Here is a love that this man has for his people. He doesn't want them upset in an, in an unnecessary way. And so his great longing is to go back and to be with his people who indeed are upset. Paul says in verse 27 that Epaphroditus was someone who was near death. He was someone who, for the sake of the gospel, nearly died, but God had mercy on him. And he says in verse 20, not just on Epaphroditus, Paul, but on me. Here we see the tender heart of Paul. Sometimes Paul is pictured as a hard man. Read his letters. He's not a hard man. He is one of the most tender, loving characters you'll meet after the Lord Jesus Christ. And he would have been broken. To see his fellow worker, fellow soldier, his fellow servant indeed dying in this way. Paul says in verse 28 to 30 to Philippians to receive Epaphroditus back and honour him. People like Epaphroditus who almost died for the work of Christ. Almost died for the sake of the gospel. People who are so committed to the gospel do deserve to be honoured and, and helped and encouraged. Here's a big question for you. Are you such a gospel person? Timothy was a gospel man. Epaphroditus was a gospel man. Nearly died for the gospel. Are you a gospel man? Are you a gospel woman? Are you a gospel young person? Oh may God give us grace that we are consumed by the gospel. And being consumed by the gospel means being consumed by Jesus. This goes back to the first part of this chapter. The Jesus who humbled himself all the way to the cross. The Jesus who is then exalted. Have we a passion for this Jesus? Are we gospel people? Is the gospel a bigger passion in our lives than anything else? Henry Martin, who was a missionary many centuries ago to India, he said if there is any book took his affection more than the Bible, he would set it aside. Is there anything in your life that you maybe need to set aside? Something that's taken more affection than the gospel, than Jesus? All for Jesus. That needs to be our motto. God willing, hopefully you'll be able to tune in tomorrow again at 10 o'clock. Every blessing.